Today I will show you the best strategy for creating Polish Balkans, really quickly. By the way, I'll show how to annihilate the Ottomans, literally zeroing out their army. Hello imperialists, this is Lukas here. Yes dear ones, today with Poland we will be challenging the mighty Ottoman Empire. Why is it mighty? In every respect, the Ottoman Empire is stronger than Poland at the beginning of the game, starting with national ideas. Where the Ottomans get an extra discipline, Turkey can muster an army that's 10,000 larger than Poland's. And at the start of the game, this difference is significant. Another point to consider is these dots called pips that you see on the units here. The Turkish ones have more of them, and that's bad. However, its real advantage lies in its cavalry. We ideally don't want to engage them in battle. I could explain to you how these pips work for the next 10-15 minutes, but it's not important. Just remember, the more of them, the worse or better, because it depends on whether you have more of them or your opponent. So yes, as you can see, Poland faces a real challenge. The first thing, rivals. Here, we need to have some common rival with Austria, and okay, Bohemia. Sorry, checkmates, but I need Austria as an ally. Then Denmark and the Teutonic Order. Polish same. Yes, let's start the debate. Sigh. And honestly, I don't think we have anything interesting here. So we'll wait a month, though, that manpower. All right, 10% from nothing is still nothing, so no. Our advisors, unfortunately, we don't have any cheaper advisors who would be good. So we'll take the basic level one. Really? Where's my morale? Aha, uh -huh, we have it. Privileges. And since I'm planning an early war with the Ottoman Empire, well, I have to distribute some of them here. More or less, this is how it looks. I won't delve into the details here. I usually do a trick to get a cheaper advisor. Oh, nice. There will be an advisor with discipline, so I definitely want him. We sell the land at the end and reclaim it because we will need it. I mean, we need the money. This time we are not disbanding our cavalry from our army. Oh, no, no, no. Because as you saw, pips will be of great significance here. And cavalry, honestly, is super important for us at this moment. So we won't be waging wars just yet. So obviously we reduce army maintenance. Fort maintenance down. And let's gather money. Let's continue deploying. Diplomatically. Let's insult Bohemia quite a lot, which will allow us to conclude a royal marriage with Austria. And soon there should also be an alliance. I also want to have an alliance with Lithuania right away. I will not usually seek a union with them, unless our ruler is very weak. Let's go! We also immediately send one spy, I mean a diplomat, but also a spy at the same time, to build a spy network in the Ottoman Empire. Alliance with the Austrians! Yes, I needed a diplomat for that. And great, I got land to claim. Yes, I know I won't fulfill this mission in terms of weak the nobility, which is usually a better solution. We will rather seek their support, but let's be honest, 50% crown lands and the lack of these privileges would not allow me to quickly attack the Ottoman Empire. Let's distribute the places in the parliament, of course, in our best provinces. Ooh, the development of Krakow. How could I say no to that? Just so you know, I'm not supporting Swedish independence. Because we would get involved in an early war, which we don't need. And now the most important decision in your gameplay, Poland. Do we go into a union with Lithuania, or do we take the mighty Władysław for? 665. Well, I know our technology will be needed here. So the better the ruler, the better. With Lithuania, our diplomacy, you know, benefits them. All right, our ruler is a terrible negotiator. I will need much cheaper mercenaries. And let's focus our efforts on military points. I could have done this two years earlier. And here, I must admit, I got a bit lucky. Byzantium has an alliance with Wallachia, what will likely lead us to have passage through Ottoman territory. Otherwise, it would also be worth waiting for them to have an alliance with a country like Serbia or some other country because Byzantium usually take some alliance. Oh god, I wanted to surprise you by attacking the Ottomans, but I ended up attacking Byzantium. But let's be honest, everyone was expecting this attack, but the Moldavian event hasn't fired yet. If we integrated Moldavia, we would get a mission on Wallachia, and then I could attack without- that is, then I would have a casus belli, because right now I simply don't have one. Speaking of the devil, let's financially support Moldavia, and in return Moldavia rewards us, it becomes our march. Let's now deal with the Moldavian matter. And now a good question, if you feel that you might need Moldavian troops, remember that marches have very nice bonuses, you can send officers to them for a small fee and further increase their morale and discipline. Besides, Moldavia itself has very high morale, so these 6000 soldiers can really pack a punch. But I am an experienced ruler, so let them pay me tribute. Nobody expected the Polish army's invasion of Wallachia, which has an alliance with Byzantium. Oh no, where's my diplomat? Alright, our ruler is quite a good commander for this time period. Fingers crossed, he doesn't die. 
All right, we got the passage. Our troops are already under Constantinople. Things are going quite well. It's important that we get here before the Ottoman army. And the Ottomans are crossing the strait. I don't know if you noticed, it means they will attack one of the countries on the Anatolian side. And the fortress, after over a year-long siege, falls. That's great, because Moldavia just got thrashed. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, no. The Ottomans are coming back. This is bad. Let's crush the Moldavian troops under their fortress in Giurgiu. Now let's go. We are looking for Byzantine troops that are also fleeing somewhere here. Ooh, Dulkadir is attacking. Great. Yay, Byzantium is captured. Money or professionalism. You know, I will have to vassalize them anyway, so we don't want to upset Byzantium. Let's head to Athens. Come, come, come. Oh my god, Henrik, he won't live long. Of course, Ypres had to butt in here. He just had to. We're the first in the world to take the fourth military technology. And that's great. And we have very good news. Because because it's not just a war with Dulkadir, it's also a war with the Great Horde. This means that the Ottomans will go to these steps and will die foolishly, because it will approach with about 40,000 troops to a fortress that can be sieged by 10,000 troops, and he will die. Oh no, 6,000, because there's no capital here, so it's even dumber than me. Oh, come on. How long can I siege this fort? Just fall already! Byzantium is occupied. Well, okay, somehow we don't have a war with Epirus. Athens disappears, and so does Moldavia. And from it, to be honest, I steal development. Alright, and these Moldavian provinces, I mean Wallachias, we transfer them to Moldavia. Well, okay, it increased our army limit a bit. Not much, but it's something. I'm really afraid of that cavalry. Seriously, this cavalry is quite strong, the very embodiment of evil. And the Ottoman Empire becomes our new rival. Yes, Turkish-Polish tensions. So many volunteers join our army. All right, do we have any interesting mercenaries? Ooh, three saw for three. Only one pips in siege, weak. But for fighting, quite a nice company. And we have a siege company, three points in siege. Ah, it's just the cavalry that makes it so expensive. But we need these mercenary companies. Let's activate our grand offensive doctrine. Defensive, darn it. Oh, another war with the Ottomans. Rise of the noble host. Well, it's not necessarily a good time for that. And pressing claims on Bohemia and Hungary. It's not the right moment for this. All right, I don't know if this trap will work, but we'll see. We're heading to retake Edirne. Well, capitals are the easiest. And this is precisely my tactic. First, I acquire a vassal. Then I reclaim a province for it. Because this significantly reduces aggressive expansion by over 75%. And now, a battle, ladies and gentlemen. The Polish army is clashing with the Ottoman army. Only a threefold numerical advantage, and look at the losses! And the Ottomans immediately detected our spies after the declaration of war. That's unfortunate. The Ottomans can survive for a long time, even without a general, but this time, they should suffer much greater losses. And so it is. And the Ottomans have retreated to Crimea, so we continue to attack them. It's actually very important to inflict these initial losses on them, while we have the advantage. He's winning this, he's winning this, I can't believe it, what's going on here? And then we attack Karaman, I won't lie. It would be nice to end the war with him as quickly as possible. And here, we've completely decimated his troops. Does Karaman have a different unit type? I didn't actually check. And now we pull our troops back to our territory. Our troops will recover faster there. Just don't do it like the complete idiot Lucas did. Try to divide them properly. You all also move here, so that my troops recover faster. And once they've recovered a bit, off we go. We especially need to capture the fortress in Jelebolu. I know I don't have a navy, but either way, the enemy will get penalties while trying to cross into this fortress. And I must admit, so far our tiny coalition is doing quite well, but that's because the Ottoman troops retreated somewhere and haven't returned yet. Meanwhile, I'm losing four gold per month. By the way, let's also upgrade the fortress on Moldavia. In Moldavia? Never mind, which leads us to a certain locked mission. Why can't I undertake it? Hello? Oh, I need to have ten provinces in the Balkans. Whoa, armies are gathering, they are gathering. To be honest with you, we can't allow them to pin us down while we're standing at this fortress. It's better if they attack Constantinople and stand at this fortress. Usually nowadays, when you move troops like this... Oh, look, the bot is heading straight here. Okay, no, Lithuania, don't do this. No. All right, we can't let Lithuania get destroyed here. They are behind in military technology, and so are the Austrians. So we need to be the ones stationed in this province. We need to defend Constantinople. The Hussars need to come here. Relief at Constantinople. All right, these Turkish armies aren't that big here, but you get the point, right? Really, the Ottomans can cause some chaos here. Look at the advantage they have, and we're not beating them. One army is destroyed and another one approaches, and it has a general, that's bad, another battle, and this one might not go in our favor since we haven't recovered our morale. And that fortress still hasn't fallen. Ladies and gentlemen, a defeat at Constantinople. But that defeat allowed us to complete the siege of Gallipoli, and we can now scorch the earth here. We need to remember that, and soon we will be battling here. Maybe wait, if we retreat, the enemy might divide their forces. Yes, they're doing that. So let's return here. Hey, don't split up, and let's wait for our garrison to 
replenish a bit. All right, time for another battle at Constantinople. Hopefully it works. We have a slight troop advantage here and the Turkish armies have fled. They've retreated. Let our mercenary army go and seize another fortress. Who captured that? Damn, Kandar did. And now the Ottoman army will probably retreat somewhere here and they might either attack through the steppes and enter Lithuanian territory, which I honestly don't really care about, or they might continue their assault through Byzantium, in which case we'll be breaking them on those two fortresses. But seriously, why did these rebels appear here? What's going on? All right, the Lithuanian troops and I will handle this. The Austrians keep retreating all the time. I don't understand what's up with them. Why aren't they here? If you're wondering why I keep such a large spy network on the Ottoman Empire, I do it for two reasons. A large spy network reduces aggressive expansion by as much as 30% against a specific country and increases siege ability by 20%. Wow, as you can see, it's very beneficial. And another thing that pays off if the war is tough for you is to advance in technology. Being at level 5 in comparison to 4 gives a massive advantage. Furthermore, we will almost equalize the technological level of the Ottomans with ours, meaning we have more pips and the Ottomans will have only one more than us, right? So we definitely want to do that. Give me that infantry. Wow, a revolution. I always thought you needed to have developed economic ideas for that, but apparently not. All right then, the Ottoman troops have moved towards Lithuania, which is good, because this will quickly burn through their remaining manpower, and they don't have much left. My allies have significantly more. That's why I'm doing this now. I leave my regular army on the Ottoman provinces, which I probably won't conquer in this war, I think, and I just loot them. I'll send the mercenary army. Since I'm paying them, they might as well be useful, right? Especially now that we have a technological advantage, so there shouldn't be any problems winning these battles, and maybe even ending wars with these smaller countries. Unfortunately, no. And honestly, it looks pretty good. We'll see. For now, the Ottoman troops are pushing in. I just annihilated one of their armies. The second one followed, meaning the Ottomans are now without an army. Completely without an army. Zero, zero, zero. Haha. <laughs> oh, and we have a very nice decision in our Polish Sejm. So cheaper annexation of my vassals. This will come in handy right now. And actually, I want to push for it, but not immediately. I'll wait a bit with that. Because the debate will last five years. So we'll take it just before the end. Let's also focus on introducing the Renaissance in Krakow. The sooner, the better, actually. Of course, we'll first develop the infrastructure, enact the appropriate edict, also get the support of the burghers, and we can develop our country. Krakow. Oh god, this is expensive. And now the Renaissance is present. After this war, there's a good chance I'll want to attack Serbia immediately. I need claims. I don't have any claims. So let's claim one province. Although I think we might then fulfill the requirement of owning those Byzantine provinces. All right, I'm not certain. So just in case, I'm setting up a spy network here. Okay, I'm bored, so I'm storming Crimea. The first reform of our government. And honestly, for Poland, we only focus on taxes. It's a shame that in reality, it's just taxes as well. And unfortunately, we have to accept the Niesawa privileges. Otherwise, we will block this entire path of mission tree for ourselves. Generally speaking, the better option would be to go with the alternative. But this time, I can't. We will have cheaper support in the parliament. Thank you. And finally, I can peace out Karaman from the war. Yeah, I see Austria went full YOLO immediately advancing. I wonder if they will capture that fortress. Oh, Austrian, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Now, you're losing a whole 20,000 troops. Ouch, that's gonna hurt. Now viewers know what not to do, and we conclude the war victoriously. We even made some profit on it. Yes, I took the passage to the other side, just to clarify. But the losses are incredible, including my insignificant ones. For a tiny amount of gold, we introduce the Renaissance. And the first idea I take for this tactic I plan to use here, the best for me will be influence ideas, which I immediately develop, and honestly, I'm eager to develop them to this level and as long as I can start annexing on the cheap. But really, they just formed the commonwealth and it's unlocking for me? That's weak. Then I won't wait with the missions to conquer my gold mine. Oh no no no. All right, and we release Bulgaria. Yes, I'll want to reclaim that territory, a very good vassal to consume. And so Poland has become one of the strongest countries in the world. In fact, we even rank second. Wow. And now it's time for Serbia. So be it. We'll manage somehow. And the Serbs came to Poland and are occupying my Poland. Poland. This can't be happening. But we easily destroy their army. Our technological advantage is so significant, it's almost a foregone conclusion. All right, let's get rid of the mercenaries. All right, four countries in a coalition. So there won't be a coalition. And we definitely need to leave troops here. There will be one rebellion after another here. So we'll wait with this army in the vicinity. Sure, a tournament. Now, why not? Wait, I had that awful air. Let's get rid of him. I mean, he fell, right? He fell. It was an accident. Nothing bad is happening. I forgot and it's done. Well, the coronation will be long, very 
very long. What the f- What's with Ansbach? No, I disagree. Hey, wait, why wasn't there a war for Danzig? Hello, where's my Danzig? The time has finally come. The time has come to offend the Bohemians again. And the Hungarians, just by the way. Alright, this war might be even harder than the war with the Ottomans. Because since the Emperor has changed, things will be lively. But it's time to start the fun. Wow. <laughs> But luckily, the entire blow went to the Austrians. I am ready to pay that price. All right, the forces are more or less comparable. However, it seems that it's still a siege simulator and the whole fun is about who sieges whom faster. And I recently had an event that speeds up my sieges, but this might be a good thing. A lot of countries will be paying me war reparations. Hello, Emperor, pay up, thanks. Oh, he's not paying me. Why does Aragon have its capital in Barcelona? Don't they usually have it elsewhere? There it is, finally, aggressive expansion. I've been waiting for this and we're conquering the Czechs with a very small coalition. I'm giving the southern part of Czechia to Austria, but don't worry, we'll reclaim it. Wow, no losses. All right, this is starting to look somewhat decent. We've gained quite a bit. And you know what? Lithuania has no air. Hey, this is the third time for me. What's happening? Wait, does Lithuania see me as their subject? Aha, uh -huh, I guess not. But, but, but once again, I got sidetracked. Time for another war with the Ottomans, because we have some provinces to reclaim. Uh, for Bulgaria. God, I forgot that this is Bulgaria. Ooh, there's some civil war in the Ottoman lands. What a pity. All right, we're clearing out these adversaries because there's quite a build up. And suddenly, the Ottomans have a huge army from somewhere. I don't know where they got it from. Okay, and look, supposedly, I no longer have any advantage over the Ottomans. For some reason, I have an edge in morale. But in battle, I defeat him without much trouble. All right, and since I plan to continue conquering through vassals. I'm choosing administrative ideas next. Alternatively, I could now opt for offensive ones because they always speed up the capture of forts. And as I've said before, this game isn't a battle simulator or map coloring simulator. Well, all right, maybe we color maps. But first we capture the fortress. But Lithuania is betraying me. I won't forget this. No, we're smashing the Ottomans. One big battle won. Now we'll catch these smaller stacks. At least that's the hope. And the Ottoman army is gone. Again, now it's time for taxes. Taxes, we like to implement taxes so everyone pays more. I do love it. Hey, actually, let me tell you, it would be nice if when you invest in these local taxes, for example, it reduces your production or trade. It would be a cool dependency, right? All right, Nicolaus Copernicus has appeared at our court and he boosts production. Okay, fine. This is with Caraman. I just want a white piece and I want to simply attack him in five years to reset my long peace period with the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans in a coalition. That's not cool, right? Eh, who cares? And that's how I'll be conquering. I'll just be releasing vassals here. The Ottomans have several big vassals in this region, which can be released and then reclaimed with less aggressive expansion. And I would do the exact same thing with the Mamluks later on. I still don't see Timur, so I don't see another large Islamic country that would enter a coalition against us. But this is exactly my route to India. All right, but I don't have Danzig, so I'll have to conquer it manually. Hey, even a personal union over Hungary won't be too painful. All right, let's finish this. We're making a flood in Hungary, taking over everything. All right, there'll be a minor coalition, but I'm ready for it. Look, we're getting gold mines, but they caught my spies. So tough luck. We have a personal union over Hungary, so Poland is looking pretty good. And it's path to world domination. And it took me just under 40 years. Gold mines developed. Hey, what's this? I'm seeing it for the first time. All right, the costs of conducting these reforms are minimal. Very nice. And it's also time to move the capital to Warsaw. In this episode from Poland, you saw a very effective method of conquering through vassals. In this episode from France, I show some tactics related to the client state that will allow France to conquer all of Europe in a little over 100 years.